Welcome. So this afternoon we're going to be reading uh, out of a passage of Psalm 118, uh, 21 through 29. Uh, so uh, why don't we read this together? I will give you thanks for you answer me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let me pray for us. Lord, we thank you for this afternoon. God, we thank you that, uh, Lord, that you have uh, been so faithful and so good to our lives, Lord. God, we thank you that every single day, God, that we can come before you with praise, Lord. And so, God, I ask that today, God, that you would lift our hearts, you would lift our soul and our spirit, God, uh, to see the reality of who you are. God, I pray that you would... Uh, reignite our hearts, God, that you would put joy in us, Lord, that you would uh, give us a new perspective, God, in which to look at life, God, and to look at the life that you have given us and to look uh, with mission, God, uh, for your kingdom. So we pray this in Jesus' name. We, amen. Amen. So let's look at this together again. What what would you say is the theme or the kind of feelings or the emotions that you read? Because a lot of times when you, uh, there's a lot of different Psalms in the Bible and sometimes they have different feelings or emotions. But when you read through these verses, uh, what are some of the emotions or the feelings that you get? Got it? Kind of a, went through the slides a little bit. So what are some of the feelings or the emotions that you get? Okay, Thanksgiving, victorious, any other? Joyous, good. Reverence, good. Thankfulness, celebration. It's actually like a very happy psalm, right? Um, it is very happy. Uh, today, this uh, afternoon, I want to be talking about the power of praise. Uh, this nature of the psalm is very praise-oriented, meaning it's focusing on who God is. And I think there's something that is so powerful about praise. Uh, there's something that when we praise God, when we open our mouth, when we focus on the truth of who he is, it lifts us up in the process. And so I'm going to, you know, praise actually comes in a lot of different ways, right? Sometimes we're, you know, coming here on a Sunday and we're singing praise music or uh, worship music to God. Uh, sometimes it comes outside of a church context, right? Uh, when you're just in conversation, when you're talking to people, uh, so there's different ways that praise can come out. Um, but well, what I want to propose to you today is that praise is so powerful, regardless of whether you feel like it or not. So let's take this for example. When you came in here on a Sunday, right? And we're getting ready for worship, and then the team steps on stage. Um, have you ever felt like, oh, I'm not ready to praise? Like, I'm not ready to worship? I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel that way. Actually... Maybe more than half of the time, I'm like not in the zone or like I'm not in the mood to sing praise. And um, one of the things that I've observed for myself is like kind of on this journey is like, okay, regardless of, uh, of what I feel right now, I want to open my mouth and praise the Lord. I want to open my mouth and really worship him. And, you know, from time to time, I'm always thinking, okay, like, Let's imagine that, let me imagine that, you know, what am I saying? I, I, 
like for example, like for today, I said, okay, I'm gonna imagine that I was stuck on an island for 10 years and I had no interaction with believers. And finally, I get to come here and finally I get to worship. And it's like, oh, now I want to praise. It's like kind of like, there is a reason to praise the Lord. Or sometimes, you know, I come into a worship session and you know, you don't feel like it, like you're grumpy or maybe you're angry. Uh, maybe for some of you, you know, the Sunday routine, right? Like you got up, but then you got up late. So then you got into the car and you were rushing and then the kids were having a tantrum and then you lost, you know, you forgot to bring something to church and then, you know, you bump a car on the way when you're trying to park the car and then finally you come in and so we're all, you know, you're flustered, right? Yeah, I think rarely we come into worship in perfect condition, right? Do, do some of you always come into worship less than perfect condition? Okay, so I'm not alone. So, but then, okay, so work with me. So you come to that point, and like, then you have a choice, right? There's a choice that says, okay, I'm just going to stand here and wait until I feel ready to worship, and then I'll worship. But then there's the opposite, where it's like, regardless of how I'm feeling, regardless of what my situation is, I want to open my mouth to praise the Lord. And that's not to say that your feelings are not val valid, right? It's not like God is saying you're, I'm in, is invalidating your feelings. But it is saying that, you know, I want to focus in this moment on the truth of who God is. And you find that just by obedience and just by faith, when we open our mouth to praise the Lord, something changes within our soul. Something changes uh, within us, in our mind, in our will and emotions, that it's almost like it gets aligned like a magnet to the truth of who God is. Have you ever experienced that before? You came in worship feeling really, I don't know, sad or angry or frustrated. But then when worship started and when you started opening your mouth to to praise the Lord, it's almost as if something shifted and you left worship different, right? That's not a coincidence. Uh, what's happening is that because we acted by faith, because we acted by obedience, the Lord almost like reoriented our thinking to say, wow, this is the truth of who God is, okay? Sometimes your situation is not true, meaning what has happened is one way to review reality, but it's not the correct way to view reality. For example, I can operate in a mindset that everything, everyone is against me, or I'm sad all the time, right? That's one way to view your situation, but it's not the truth, right? The truth is, is that God is always with us, right? The truth is that, why, my soul, are you so downcast? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him, my Savior and my God. And so there's something very powerful in praise. So sometimes, uh, when I'm, so sometimes when I'm reading through the Bible, you know, every day there's a passage in Psalms. And so sometimes it's like really upbeat, but then like I get up really early in the morning and I'm not awake and I'm not ready to praise, but then I read it. And just by faith, by writing it down and saying, okay, God, I want to respond in this manner. It lifts me up in the process. Okay. Uh, one thing that I think that is really interesting about Psalm 118 is that it's actually talking about a person. So when you look through these verses, Can you see it? Who is the person that is talking about? The prophetic person in this psalm. Jesus, right? If you, if you look at verse 22, it says, The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Okay. Who wrote this psalm? Maybe, probably David, right? But... David is like way before the time of Jesus. So how is it that in the act of praise that he starts talking about Jesus? Okay, so go down a little bit more. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. Okay. So we go back to verse 22. Can you remember where else in scripture this is referenced? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? Somewhere in the New Testament, right? I had to look it up myself, so let's look at it. 
So it says, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So actually, if you read later in scripture, Jesus uses Psalm 118 to refer to himself. So let's read this together. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And Jesus is referring to himself. He's like, I am the cornerstone. And let's read here in Ephesians 2, 19 through 21. You are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. I thought it was interesting because, number one, when Jesus is referring to the scripture, I was like, man, if I was a Jew reading the Psalms back and then, I probably would glaze over Psalm 118. But I guess the Jewish people knew their scripture so well that they could refer to those things. And so, very interesting that Psalm 118, even though David is saying this, is actually a prophetic utterance about who Jesus Christ is and who he will be. And actually, that's not the only place in Psalm 118 that you see that Jesus Christ is mentioned, right? So it says here, let's read it together. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. So do you remember where in the New Testament that that was said? So it was said when Jesus is entering Jerusalem as king. Let's read this. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So what am I saying? Okay, so we're going back to Psalm 118. Okay, okay so it's mentioning Jesus, but what does that have to do with me? There's something about praise that is also prophetic. And when I'm saying prophetic, meaning it is uttering the heart of God, but it is also saying something that is not there that you cannot, that you don't necessarily see in the situation. Right? And so David is talking about the coming Messiah. Do you think that David was specifically referencing to Jesus or he was aware that he was referring to Jesus? I don't know, debatable, right? Regardless of what, whether he was aware or not of what he was saying, it's still reference to Jesus, the future Messiah and the future hope. Did you know that when you praise, you're not speaking about what you see in front of your eyes, but you're uttering what God sees, right? And so I can be, you can be stuck in a situation like, it seems very dire. I don't know what to do. And uh, you start praising God by saying, God, I thank you that you are faithful. You know, God, I thank you that you will provide for me. But then to the normal person, it's like, well, God is, it doesn't look like God is providing. It doesn't look like he's faithful. But again, praise is prophetic, meaning that you're not speaking about what you see in the situation. You're speaking about who God is, right? I think it was so powerful when Douglas was sharing, actually earlier this morning, remember, you were sharing the story of Kidani, right? And he said, what are you going to do? And, what did, and then Kidani said, God must have another way. You know, that's actually praise, right? He said, God must have another way. In the moment, none of us saw how there could be another way, right? But by the act of praising and speaking forth the heart of God, God actually provided another way. See, that's, that's what I'm saying, is that when you're praising God, you're not just speaking what the situation is, but you're speaking the heart of God. Do you remember in the story of Ezekiel, and Ezekiel has this open vision, right? And then he's in, God takes him to the valley, and it's this dry valley, and there's all these bones. And then do you remember what the Lord says to Ezekiel in that moment? Son of man, can these bones live? And what was Ezekiel's response? Oh God, only you know, right? And then God said to Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones. Can you imagine what Ezekiel felt? He's like, they're just bones. Like, what do you mean prophesy to the bones? But by faith, Ezekiel prophesies. And by prophesying, 
in the vision, the bones put on flesh, and then it rises up as an army, right? I think there's something about what God is saying there. When you look at the situation and all you see are bones, don't just walk around all the time and say, bones, there's bones, you know, there's bones everywhere, you know, there's bones, right? But sometimes we're doing that in our life, you know? But by praising, you're speaking forth the heart of God. Say, prophesy that these bones will live. I remember that uh, for me back in 2015, I, you know, I was going through some mild depression and everything that the Lord was saying to me in that season of my life was life. I'm bringing life. I'm bringing life. And in the moment, I totally did not feel like that, right? Because it's like, I'm depressed. You know, there's mornings I don't want to get up. I just want to stay in bed all day at night. You know, sometimes I cry uncontrollably and, and whatnot. And everything that the Lord said was life. I'm bringing life. Now, I had a choice in that moment. It's like, you, I can look at my situation and just say bones, 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 bones. Or I can start agreeing with the Lord and saying, yes, Lord, you are bringing life. Oftentimes, when the Lord speaks to you, it has not yet happened. Do you know what I mean? When the Lord speaks to you, it's something that will happen. It's the character. It's the nature of God. And we have to stop looking at our situation as it is, but through the lens of who God is. And so for one of the things that I realized for myself is that actually depression is a lie. And when I say that, I'm, I'm not saying that it's not something real that we struggle this with during our time on earth. It's a way to view reality, but it is not the correct way to view reality. Right? Is there depression in heaven? No, there, there's not, right? Because scripture says that every tear will be wiped away. And, and then we will be with the Lord forever. So there's no sadness, there's no depression in heaven. So by deduction, what is a higher reality? Heaven's reality or the earthly reality? Heaven's reality, right? So even though we experience experiences here on earth, it doesn't mean that it is eternal or it's going to last forever. And so for me, I started to say, oh, depression is a lie. Meaning that though I feel like this, it doesn't mean that my situation is like that. And so actually by praising, you start to agree with the truth that, yes, Lord, I receive life from my spirit and my body and my soul today. And I reject it. So that's, that's what I was praying. And actually things started to change. Um, but it's like, you know transition lenses? Anybody have those? It's like, <laughs> the, the idea, right, is that when you go into the sun, the lens will get darker, right? Because it's supposed to adjust. I feel like depression is the opposite of transition lenses. It's like when you go into the room, then the lens gets darker. You know what I mean? So you're like you're looking at things and you say, like, it's all dark. Like, it's all bones. But it's like almost as if the Lord is saying, all right, take off your glasses or change your lens. He's like, okay, look, without shades. He's like, oh, that's how things are, right? Maybe like for those of you that wear glasses or contacts, before you got glasses or contacts, you couldn't see anything, right? Like I can't even see your faces or your eyeballs right now. But then, and then you update your prescription. He's like, oh, that's what you look like. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I, I feel like that's what praise is like. Praise is like putting on glasses and saying, oh, wow, God is real and God is faithful. But if we keep re reacting to our situation of how it is, like, we will never be lifted into the kingdom reality, right? Uh, I think sometimes that when we, you know, all of us complain, right? Not, and I'm not excusing myself, but I, I realize that a lot of times in our complaining, it has very little to do with the actual situation and more about the condition of our heart. You know what I mean? It's like this, I don't know, hypothetical person, all right? These are always complaining, right? You say, this is bad, the food is bad, service is late, and the chairs are not nice, and I can't hear, and whatever. And then say you change the chairs, and you made the lights, or, or you know, not even at church. You're like, okay, you know, you fix the situation. There'll always be another thing to complain about, right? And it has less to do with what the situation is and more about the condition of the heart. So if you think like, all right, if you were to say that, all right, complaining is legitimate based on your situation, that means that, I don't know, I would have no reason to complain, right? You know, because sometimes people ask me, they're like, hey, Elliot, how are you doing? And sometimes I feel like I don't have 
much of a reason to be tired, right? Because I don't have kids yet. <laughs> Sometimes I look at Eric and Vivian and I'm like, oh man. <laughs> we were having a, a new Vine core team meeting and they were asking, how are you doing, Elliot? And it's like, compared to you, like really good. <laughs> like, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like, you don't have a reason to complain if it was actually legitimate. Like if we had a valid reason to complain, sometimes I look at Kidani and he's like, dude, I cannot complain, you know? It's like, here we are talking about, oh, man, I got a parking ticket, or, you know, it's like, but if Kidani was real and like, he'd be probably the most depressed person in the room, right? <laughs> because of his situation. But he's like one of the joy, most joyful people in the room. So it has very little to do with the situation. And it's always in a position that we say, God, you know, I want to lift my praise to you. Okay. And so... That's what I want to present to us today, is that the power of praise is to not look at the situation, but to agree with the heart of God and say, God, I want to thank you for how faithful that you have been in my life. I don't feel like it, but you are faithful, and that's the truth, just regardless of what I feel. God, I want to thank you that you have provided for everything in, in my life, right? And I think that this is a good discipline to have. I was looking at the calendar, and today the date is October 21st, right? Did you realize there's only 10 more weeks for this year, and then 2018 will end? 2018 has come and gone. And I was like, wow, if you reflect on 2018, it's like, how have you seen God being good to you? Like, how have you seen the faithfulness of who God is? And... Maybe it's a little bit too early to reflect on the year, but maybe not. But I wanted us today to actually take some time to reflect and say, wow, how has God been faithful? How has God been good to me? And you find that by focusing on the truth and by praising him, it, it changes the way that we view our reality. And so today I was... Uh, I'm going, yeah. Today, you know, I was practicing... Writing your own psalm to the Lord. So we read today's psalm, right? That says praising the Lord. So we're going to have an opportunity this afternoon for you to write your own psalm to the Lord in reflection on this past year or past years. It doesn't matter. So I'll, I'll read to you what I wrote as an example. Thank you, Lord, for being so faithful in my life. From SoCal to NorCal to New York to here, you knew it all. You have provided for me again and again and again. You are abundant and extravagant towards me. I have lacked nothing. Thank you for fathering me, instilling and calling forth my being. Thank you for releasing me from depression, from fear and anxiety. Thank you for giving me peace about the future as I release control. I want to know you. I want to walk with you. All else is vanity. Keep me near to your heart. I refuse the hardened heart, bitterness, and jadedness. I want to burn with your presence all the days of my life. Okay. So each one of you should have received a piece of paper. Does everyone? If you need a piece of paper, you can raise your hand and uh, Lynn will give you one. But this afternoon, I want to give us space to reflect and to you to write your own psalm, your own thanksgiving to the Lord. And... Uh, it is practicing the discipline of praise. It's like, what can I praise God for? What can I be thankful for? So we're going to take maybe about 10 minutes or so. And uh, you can take time to reflect and uh, respond to the Lord and write it. And after you're done writing, you can you know, keep it uh, for yourself. But uh, let's take some time uh, to reflect with the Lord. And maybe we can lower the lights. So if you're ready, I want you to take what you have written and you can stand up. And in practicing the, the gift of giving praise, we're actually going gonna, gonna to take you one step further, all right? So I want you to gather into a group of three or four. And uh, I want you to read out loud your psalm of praise to the Lord. And if you feel... Super uncomfortable. If you're not able to do it, that's all right. But I do want to encourage you to read out your psalm of praise to the Lord. And so you guys will go one by one, and then um, 
after the person reads their psalm, you just say amen together, and then you go to the next person, okay? So why don't you find a group of three or four, gather together, and uh, uh, read your psalm. If you really don't want to, I, you can pass, but just try, okay? So we'll give you a couple minutes to do that. And go ahead and find a group. If you're ready, you can turn around this way. And uh, let me close and just give a, you a blessing. So you can hold out your hands and receive the Lord's blessing. So I bless you in Jesus' name that you will always have the praise of the Lord on your lips. I bless you that in every situation that you will see God's perspective on it. I bless you with exceeding joy uh, in every situation, even that transcends, you know, uh, the circumstance, but even in the midst of trial that you would feel the Lord's joy overwhelming in you. I bless you that you be filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit every single day and that even uh, uh, in the trial that you would sense that His presence presence is so near and that he sees you and that he knows you. I bless you that uh, that not only would you praise, but that you would spread it to those around you. Uh, that by you praising, that you will speak into uh, the prophetic of what God has planned for your family, for for the future, and, and for whatnot. And so bless you that we uh, bless New Vine, that we'll be a church of praise, that we'll always lift up the praise in the midst of doing so, that the Lord is exalted and his presence is here. And I bless you with that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.